temporary differences are likely to be reversed in the future. Temporary differences arise due to timing differences in the recognition of revenue and expenses. As the future reversals bring about potential benefits and obligation to the firm, deferred tax assets and liabilities are created to reconcile such timing differences. So how do such timing differences come about? To understand this, we first have to understand the concept of a tax base. Now, we've learned that the carrying value of an asset is the value of the asset reported in the balance sheet, net of accumulated depreciation and amortization. That is the accounting side of the story. Now, we know the tax man may not thoroughly agree with the accountant. So, for example, the accountant decides that the best treatment for depreciating this asset is to use the straight line method with no residual value. The tax man, on the other hand, says only the double declining balance method is allowed. So under tax reporting, the amount of depreciation of the asset is higher in the initial years. The value of the asset, less the accumulated depreciation under tax reporting, is the tax base of the asset. While the carrying value is the value of the asset on the balance sheet, net of depreciation and amortization, the tax base of an asset is the amount deductible for tax purposes in future periods as the economic benefits of the asset are realised. While the carrying value and the tax base can be the same, they can also be different, as in this case. This is what causes the temporary differences in the accounting profit and the taxable income for the period. Such differences, as mentioned earlier, will likely reverse in the future. Let's go through an example to highlight this temporary difference. A transportation firm acquired a fleet of pre-owned buses for $90,000 with a three-year useful life and no salvage value. The buses are estimated to generate $60,000 of annual revenue for each of the three years. The firm uses the straight-line depreciation method for accounting purposes and the double-declining balance method for tax purposes. Compute the deferred tax asset or liability for the three years as a result of the different depreciation methods used. Pause the video now and work out your answers. And we're back. Let's start with the long method. The financial account is what we're by now very familiar with. We have $60,000 of revenue each year and under the straight line method, the depreciation each year is $30,000. That leaves us with pre-tax profit of $30,000 each year and a tax expense of $9,000 each year. Under tax reporting, the double declining balance depreciation method is used. Hence, we have $60,000 depreciation in the first year, $20,000 in the second year and $10,000 in the third. Deducting the depreciation from the revenue, we get taxable income of $0 $40,000 and $50,000, which means that the tax payable is $0 for the first year, $12,000 for the second and $15,000 for the third. So what causes the temporary difference is the difference between the tax expense and the tax payable for these three years. In the first year, the firm reports $9,000 tax expense in its income statement while the payable is only zero dollars. This means that the company is paying less tax than it actually should. We know that this will reverse in the future, so we create a deferred tax liability of $9,000 in the first year. In the second year, the tax expense is again $9,000. The tax payable, on the other hand, is now $12,000 the difference between the two is minus $3,000. This means that the change in deferred tax liability in this year is minus $3,000. So the deferred tax liability is reduced to $6,000 in the second year. The third year is the same story. The change in deferred tax liability is minus $6,000. We end up with zero deferred tax liability for the buses at the end of the third year. Notice that the total taxes is the same for tax expenses and tax payable. The deferred tax liability also reverts back to zero at the end of the third year. 
Both of these confirm that whatever tax savings or tax overpayment in the early years gets reversed in the later years. Using this method may be easier to comprehend, but there are shortcomings with such an approach. Besides being more tedious in that we have to calculate the tax expense and tax payable, imagine the case where we are not able to estimate the revenue for each year. A faster approach will be to use the difference between the carrying value and tax base of the asset. For this method, we first calculate the depreciation expense under financial accounting in order to get the ending carrying values for each of the years. Next, we calculate the depreciation expense under tax reporting to get the ending tax base for each of the years. The ending tax base is the historical cost minus the accumulated depreciation. The deferred tax liability is simply the difference between the carrying value and the tax base, multiplied by the tax rate. We get a deferred tax liability of $9,000 in the first year, $6,000 in the second year, and $0 in the third. This is identical to what we've calculated using the earlier method. Let's summarize the method for using tax base to calculate deferred tax assets or liabilities. If the tax base is lower than the carrying value, there is a deferred tax liability on the balance sheet to account for the difference. The deferred tax liability is the carrying value minus the tax base multiplied by the tax rate. Conversely, if the tax base is higher than the carrying value, this implies that the depreciation reported for tax purposes so far is lower. The difference will result in a deferred tax asset instead of a liability. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.